the summer saw a lot of challenges for the Sun Devils. But now, January is coming to an end and the postseason is in sight. All that's left to do is win. The Robert Morris Colonials come into Oceanside Ice Arena this weekend, but are they ready for the Tempe Heat? It's almost time to find out, here on Pac-12 Plus. Hello and welcome into another season of Cronkite Sports Spotlight here on Pac-12 Plus. I'm Jack Lauderre, alongside me is Ethan Ryder. Ethan, we got a great show coming up for everyone today before ASU matches up against Robert Morris. We sure do, and here at Cronkite Sports Spotlight, we have everyone covered. We're going to talk about the advantage that ASU's depth gives them for Greg Powers' team when they face up against other teams. We're going to talk about the Robert Morris Colonial, just give a little bit of background on ASU's opponent. And after that, we're going to be talking about just a tough reality of being a freshman on a D1 hockey team. And then we're going to get everyone caught up on what ASU's been doing over the break. Yeah, before we hit any of that, first, we're going to talk about two of ASU's best newcomers. They're having an immediate impact on this program, but it wasn't always easy for these up-and-coming stars. Mike McQuaid tells us about their journey to the desert. Thanks, guys. James Sanchez and Willie Neerham has had their final chance to play Division I college hockey. Both have had identical paths and immediate impact on this Sun Devil program. James Sanchez from Northbrook and Willie Neerham from Skokie. The Illinois friendship started at the same time as they both began to play hockey. Like we were really young, like uh, eight, nine years old. Um, and then we kind of started playing together in AAA at Team Illinois and then Mission 2. And then uh, kind of kept in contact. He went over to- I made the smart move. I went to the CYA. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, my state championship would say yeah. otherwise. After five years of playing together, their career paths went in a different direction. Sanchez was selected to play for the United States National Development Program, while Niren was drafted in the United States Hockey League. Uh, James gasped me after he made the USA team, so. Yeah, well, we're back. Uh, we're back. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, same thing as like, yeah, same thing as like the mission guys, like you kind of go do your thing, like you kind of keep a touch here and there. After two years of junior hockey, Sanchez committed to the University of Michigan, near him to Miami, Ohio. You go home, like we all skate together anyway, so it's kind of like you kind of go do your thing for a little bit, when you come home, you pick up right where you left off. Yeah. After two frustrating years in the Midwest, both were looking for new opportunities. Two individuals. Uh, you know, I kind of thought I was going back to Dubuque alone, and then uh, I talked to uh, my, uh, or our head coach, um, Oliver David, back in Dubuque, and he said he was making some moves and everything, and that there were other things falling into place. With both taking a step back from college hockey, it paid dividends as they combined for 87 points in the USHL. Way more ice time than you can imagine, especially coming from where we came from. Um, it was good to kind of just get that confidence back. I thought last year was just a big... Uh, like self-confidence thing, like just rushing the puck, skating and holding on to it, just like trying to like go back to like uh, even like the AAA players of just being like confident going in every night knowing you're gonna like try to dominate out there. I'm not even looking at the points thing, but just, you know, getting my game back, I was able to go out there, play some big minutes, play PK, PP, 5-on-5, five five, just, just the bulk of the, you know, bulk of the game, which I haven't been, I hadn't been able to do two years prior, especially, you know, at Miami, Ohio. Having gained newfound confidence, they both knew they had one last chance to play college hockey. It seems like I, I can't pass up on this, and it was just, and then visiting and just seeing it, it was just, yeah, I was like, all right, yeah, I want to go there, so. And uh, we talked about it a little bit, though, but yeah. he is. And, uh, I committed probably a month after him, and uh, everyone thinks that he did some big recruiting pitch to me, and it really wasn't uh, wasn't needed. You know, um, you know, I trust Sanch, and everything they were saying throughout the recruiting process was was what I was looking for. Their journey has taken them from Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, Ohio, and now Arizona. With eight games left in the regular season, Sanchez and Yerm are willing to do anything to experience a frozen floor atmosphere. From Oceanside Ice Arena, Mike McQuaid, Cronkite Sports. It's not always easy to rebound when something doesn't work out the way you planned, but it does make it that much sweeter when you step up and get the job done. That's exactly what the second and third units have managed to do for ASU hockey. WCSN hockey reporter Michael Gutnick has the details. 
At the beginning of the season, Johnny Walker and James Sanchez carried the load offensively, contributing nearly 60% of ASU's offense for the first two months. But that offensive power couldn't be the only source of fuel to the fire. After tinkering the Lions and kindling some confidence, the Sun Devils have ignited a roaring fire within their middle six that is now, according to assistant coach Mike Field, a nightmare for their opponents. Between, you know, what's quote unquote a third line or a second line, um, with those guys stepping up and producing the way they have and they're kind of catching their stride, you know, just it's a nightmare for other teams to have to match up against that, you know, and uh, those guys have been doing a great job uh, just, again, kind of sticking to what works for us and, and what works for them uh, and they're getting rewarded on the scoreboard. A hot Robert Morris start to the season has cooled recently to a 2-8-3 record in their past 13 games. Junior forward Nick Perkusik leads the team in goals and points at 7 and 16 respectively. However, the offense works more as a collective force, evenly distributing and spreading the puck around the ice. The Sun Devils will not have to worry about finding shot opportunities, with the Colonials allowing the third most of said opportunities in the division. Hearing the goal horn in Oceanside Ice Arena will be a bit more tricky, as senior goalie Justin Kappelmaster has been fantastic. His current goals against average sits at 2.42, while his 90 93.3 safe percentage ranks eighth in the country. Needless to say, guys, don't expect the Colonials to be waving the white flag anytime soon. Now, let's be honest. If you've gone to college, you know. Being a freshman can be both exciting and intimidating. But once you get comfortable with the people around you, you turn out just fine. Our Ali Kuzniak sits down with two of ASU's freshmen to talk about their relationship with their teammates. I'm here with freshman defensive Jack Judson and Jacob Semek. Now, before we get into dogging your teammates a little bit, can you just go off of what your freshman year experience has been so far and what it's like to be a Sun Devil? Uh, it's been awesome so far. I think me and Jake have really enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of great guys on the team, and we've had a lot of fun, so no complaints at all. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, best place to play in college hockey, and uh, the school's awesome, and the students are awesome, and uh, all our teammates are great guys. Who would be the worst dressed teammate? Worst dressed? Uh, I think uh, I saw Willie Neerum uh, out with the boys in sweatpants and flip flops on the weekend, Whoa. so I'm going to just have to go with that uh, performance right there. Sam, would you agree? Yeah, it's, it's Willie Neerum by a country landslide. Who's the best dressed teammate? I'm going to go with my boy, Jordy Sandu. Uh, guy looks sharp, uh, always has a nice suit on. I'm going to go with uh, Philip Bunces. Uh, unfair advantage with like the tattoo he can rock to and his height, so it's Phil for sure. Who has the worst music taste on the team? Uh, I'm going to go with Johnny Walker. Um, he takes the pregame ox. Uh, rightfully so, he's earned it, but he's got to mix it up a bit. So it's Johnny Walker by by a lot. Do you agree? Um, I don't know if I agree, but I just want to give a shout out to myself. I think I'm pretty good on the Ox. Uh, maybe in a couple of years I'll get my chance. So, so who's the worst with girls? Um, I'm gonna go with Demetrius Comanzis. Uh, a lot of potential there. A lot of potential, but he's a he's a highly recruited prospect for ladies, but hasn't lived up to it. Hasn't lived. Who smells the worst on the team? Uh, Evan DeBrower. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not uh, pretty next, unanimous. The <laughs> Brower. The And who's the funniest teammate? Yeah, Jordy Sandu is just absolutely hilarious, and like he's kind of shy about it, but once you get to know him, like, oh man, yeah, he's funny. Hey, thanks guys for joining me. As a freshman myself, I completely understand where they're coming from. It's hard enough to keep track of stuff during the first semester without a D1 sport to deal with. I can't, I can only imagine what it would be like with one. Speaking of keeping track of things, WCSN hockey reporter Hunter Hipple has kept track of what ASU hockey has done over the break. Here he is to keep you updated on what happened. Nothing changed too much over the break with ASU hockey. The team still has a good record and is in position to make the NCAA tournament for a second straight year. But the break saw some ups and downs to start with for the Sun Devils. ASU got back on track though as they won five of their next six games. The Sun Devils also switched things up a bit in the net. The Harvard series brought Evan DeBrower some struggles leading to Max Prostick taking over for him in both games. DeBrower got the starts at Michigan Tech and made it through both of those. 
but after surrendering a 3-0 lead to Brown in the second game of the series, Krosnick entered and led a comeback. ASU piggybacked that momentum heading into RIT the next weekend, but the grad transfer goalie got down early in Saturday night's game and was pulled for DeBrower, who served in the net once again as ASU came back from a deficit. Sun Devil fans will be hoping the team can get out to a better start tonight. Right, guys? Thank you, Hunter. Now, Ethan, a lot has happened with this ASU team since we've last left everyone, but it's now crunch time. There's only four weeks left in this regular season. That's right, Jack. This next four weeks is a stretch with huge implications on the Sun Devil hockey season. And with our time running out, that four-week stretch starts right now as we send you out to Oceanside Ice Arena for puck drop with the Arizona State Sun Devils facing off against the Robert Morris Colonials here on Pac-12+.